like poor tea is no caffeine, and you're hydrating your body at the time giving it nutrients, enjoying the flavors, the deep different flavors. They say there's five different flavors that appear in the mouth uh, when you drink a high quality tea, like, like pungent, tangy, uh, sweet, bitter, and uh, salty. All those flavors are there, and so you're really called to focus on the different transitional shades of the flavor of tea and to offer gratitude for those flavors so but you have to focus which is the reason why it's good for young children and I got all these kids starting um, tea drinking when they were 10 years old maybe 10 years old it gets young children uh, doing something dangerous which is ho handling hot liquid uh, when they're usually so shaky and they can't control stuff the tea ceremony, holding the teacup properly, f helps them focus their mind, because young kids, of course, even older people too, but young kids have a ridiculously short attention span. So the hotness of the tea, the, the danger of the boil, the danger of the hot tea, uh, makes them focus and not spill, okay? Which then allows them to develop micro uh, body control, to, or what we call technical body control, which then, of course, helps them as they have to learn technical training and technical fighting arts, etc. Okay, so it, it's all connected. Not only do you bond with your family, you bond with your relationships. You know, real, you bond with people, which is the joy of life. It's the joy and the blessing of life to bond with high quality and honorable people. <clears throat> but you also, at the same time, can bond with your spouse, bond with your children, uh, develop relationships, deepen relationships, notice together as a as as a family or as you know group you can notice together the 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 minute and rich details of something simple like a sip of tea and that then expands your level of awareness so that you can then recognize details of other things that you're missing recognize details of other gifts that God is giving you <clears throat> okay and so I was explaining this to the kids yesterday um, that I also want to inherit this tradition to them too so they can share that with their spouse, their children and, 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 and have the blessing of that grace uh, with their families. Now, uh, Gideon, I believe it was Gideon, he said, did Father do Tiritis ever too? And I said, I did it for him, I explained. I did it for Father. Okay, I made the tea next to Father when I was <clears throat> with him. Let's say he was uh, watching, uh, watching a, a soccer game when, you know, when, our, when our soccer team was playing or whatever. I would sit next to him watching. I, I, I was never a big soccer fan. But anyways, I would sit there and I would make a tea ceremony and then I would offer Father tea. Whether it's Korean style or Japanese. I would also do Japanese style for him. Um, so that is now part of our historical Chinese culture of second king serving the king of kings, okay? And of course, it's part of our culture because I do it on a daily basis with the queen, daily basis. I mean, I don't think there's one day in the last 20 years that we pass through without having tea together. You know what I'm saying? So that's it's a beautiful thing that spouses can do for one another to serve one another. And, uh, you know, I, I probably 80, 90% of the time, I'm making the tea, and then I am the host and she's the guest. Sometimes we'll flip it on and then she's the host and I'm the guest, but that's more rare. It's probably nine times out of ten where I'm the host and she's the guest. <clears throat> and when it's combined with the kebana, you can even, uh, you know, with a flower arrangement, little uh, beautiful wildflower that you got from the, from the roadside or from your garden uh, that symbolizes the season and, and, and to notice the beauty of creation while you're there don't just you know how do they say in the english stop to smell the roses you know what i mean stop stop running around so fast sometimes stop for one second and notice right tim coming into the chenyugong is noticing what's happening around the chenyugong whereas before he did it <laughs> he's noticing the little details that we're putting in <clears throat> right stop smell the roses notice the little details and with your kids, you can do that too. They can even bring a blade of grass. A blade of grass is a beautiful thing too. There's a lot of shades on it. There's a lot of texture. It's actually serrated. 
some blades of grass are serrated. And so when you push pull them, there's little barbs on them, as you will know if you actually uh, felt grass very closely and you looked at it. So you can even put a blade of grass in there in your little uh, uh, ceramic pot with your tea set and just reflect on the beauty of that simple blade of grass that we walk by and we step on every day. But all of God's creativity is still in there. All of his mathematics, all the Fibonacci equations are still there. So the natural world is God's art. So when we're not, we're worshiping the art but we're worshiping the artist who created the art, okay? And something as simple as a stone or a blade of grass. These are all, Suiseki is the art of stone presentation, right? So when the kids were younger, they used to, they know daddy does the, the rock presentation, the art of rock presentation as well, <clears throat> which everybody is starting to see because Chani Guga, I'm creating rock gardens. Um, but the kids would actually collect stones for me. Of course, the stones they collected were low level because they don't understand the art of rock presentation yet but they were trying to collect stones because they knew daddy liked it right so that's love too <clears throat> and then of course each stone has its own beauty some more idealized some more higher level than others but that incorporates into the tea ceremony okay into that rarefied art form which is <clears throat> part of the trophic trophic traditions or the, uh, or the um, tranquility-based traditions, which help in balancing out the very aggressive, <clears throat> violent, <clears throat> you know, even art of the samurai sword, you're, you cut people's heads off. You know, the art of firearms, man, you're shooting people up. You know what I mean? The art of uh, strangulation crippling, that's Brazilian jiu-jitsu, or even striking, you're pummeling people's faces in. <clears throat> These kind of arts are very well balanced by the tranquility arts, the, almost the radical opposite. Uh, with the tranquility arts, which help balance that process out and help those muscles flex and then decompress, flex, relax, flex, relax. So that's very important for people who are training very dangerous combat arts, okay?